So see over here, this is the diagram which I have taken from Ginong. And this is how the question uh, came in the NEAT PG. All right. So axoplasmic flow. What do you mean by axoplasm? What do you mean by cytoplasm? The plasma is nothing but the medium. You require medium for everything. So inside the cell, you have a medium. Why you require media? Because inside your cell, you have the factory. What is the factory? Nucleus, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus. Then uh, you have uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and whatnot. So all of them are going to either produce proteins, lipids, neurotransmitter, all these things, or ATP, let's say. Right? So they all are going to act as a factory. So when the metabolism is going on inside the cell, require a medium and the plasma is going to be providing us that medium. So if the plasma is present inside the cell, we are going to call it as cytoplasm. If the plasma membrane or uh, not the membrane, if the plasma or that medium is present inside the axon, we are going to call it as axoplasm. Easy, right? See over here. If I say that this is the cell body, you know the neuron ka structure. This is one neuron, right? This is the cell body of the neuron. And mind you, all the factory material just I mentioned right now, nucleus, Golgi apparatus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, vesicles, the mitochondria, all of them are going to be present into the cell body, which is known as soma, soma, right? And then we are going to have the long process attached with the soma. That is, we are going to call it as axon. All right. And at the end of axon, we are going to have these axon terminals. Terminate means that is going to end there. Right. So that is going to be having one important property of exocytosis. So vesicles are what? Vesicles are basically the storage bodies. OK. You do have the, uh, you can say the Nani Kapotli or Dadi Kapotli you must have have. Right. So piggy bank basically in which you store the money, these vesicles are going to store whatever is produced by the uh, soma, right? Neurotransmitter ho gaya or nerve growth factor ho gaya. So let's talk about neurotransmitter, okay? Neurotransmitter, most of them are produced at the soma. Reason being, because the factory is there in the soma, all right? So they are going to be produced in the soma, except like acetylcholine, which can be uh, produced in the axon terminal also, all right? But... Though they are produced in the soma, they are going to be exocytose. That means they will be secreted from the terminal. So what is the problem? The problem is the axon is there in between. I have to transport that vesicle towards the axon terminal. So how this is going to occur? This is going to occur with the cargos, right? So remember... Uh, if I have to get, let's say, I have to transport, I have to travel from point A to point B, right? How I'm going to transport? Let's say I choose railway, okay? So there is going to be railway track. Okay, I require a track first and I require railway cargoes, that is railway ka dabba I require, okay? So the track will be formed from the protein molecule, which is known as tubulin. It looks like a tubule, microtubule. This tubule is very, very small. Teeny tiny. So that's why we call it as microtubule, which is made up of, hang on, the name we don't have to remember. Since it looks like a tubule, right, we are going to call that protein as tubulin. There are three types of tubulin, alpha, beta, gamma. Mainly it is going to be made up of alpha and beta. Why not gamma? Gamma helps in the cell division, not in the transport. For now, just remember, this is the track on which my railway is going to um, you can say run, all right? So this track is made up of the tubulin protein. And if I zoom at it, this particular molecule, it looks like this, okay? So this is the cargo, which you can see over here. I'll just highlight it. If you can see this zigzag point over here, so this is nothing but the cargo. How this happens? These are coiled two structures, right? One is going to move forward and then another is going to coil back again and go forward, okay? So that's how they move. That's how they move, okay? One one by one, like a steps, right? So these are their footsteps. One will go forward. Then again, this will go forward. Then first one will come forward. Second will follow that, all right? That's how they're going to move. And that's why they know one as molecular motor. And what is this? They are carrying the cargos. It can be nerve growth factor, it can be neurotransmitter or it can be any protein. Sometimes they carry the mitochondria also towards the axon terminal. Okay. 
Now, what you can see that this arrow is showing that the transport is going from the soma towards the axon terminal. If the substance is going from the soma towards the axon terminal in this direction, I will be calling this as, I will be calling this as, once again, I will be calling this as the anterograde transport. I will be calling it as anterograde, means in the straight direction towards the axon terminal. So if it is going towards the axon terminal, we are going to call it as the anterograde transport. But what if it is going to come back in a reverse manner from the axon terminal towards the soma? If it is coming towards the soma, then I'll be calling it as retrograde. If it is coming in the reverse direction, I will be calling it as retrograde transport. Now, if I talk about this particular protein, this was given as A and they ask you, what is the A? Wonderful, uh, Ikigai. Oh, nice name that. Uh, Abhishek and again, Ikigai. Right. So, Khan also giving. Um, Subhi also giving the answer. Wonderful. So, they have asked that identify A and B. So A, please remember, it is, isko bhi kuch naam de de de. so the name is kinasin and myosin. Kinasin and uh, there are various types of myosin, particularly type 1 and type 5, they are going to help us out. They won't ask you that. Just remember kinasin and myosin. These are the two types of protein which causes this anterograde transport, isn't it? But if I am talking about the reverse transport, which is coming from the axon terminal towards the soma, I will be calling it as retrograde transport. Now, I understand that anterograde, I require it because most of the neurotransmitters are formed there. Nerve growth factors are formed in the soma. So, I require them. But why I require retrograde transport? Please remember, body is the best example of economy, right? Just say, um, you must have uh, the mom at your house, right? She doesn't throw anything which is old or which is just reusable back again, right? So similarly, <laughs> the body also do not, uh, you know, throw the uh, material which can be reused back. So our body recycles it, right? Some vesicles have the neurotransmitter which didn't get exocytosed, right? So they will be recycled back. Or even if the vesicle is almost empty, we can at least reuse or recycle, remodify, modulate that vesicle, right? And form something different, okay? So that is going to be recycled back or let's say nerve growth factor or whatever is left over, that will be recycled, right? So recycling, we are going to require the retrograde transport isn't it so that is there now different type of you can see the shapes are different isn't it this is different and this molecule is different now there is one clinical applied aspect over here what is the applied aspect <laughs> what happens is when the retrograde transport occurs there are some toxins and there are some viruses can you tell me the name which are going to get hold of this uh, molecule which is causing the retrograde transport and reach to the soma and then they cause disease. But even if they got into the axon terminal, can't they proliferate? No. For that, they require protein. They require energy. They require the, if they're viruses, they require the, you know, the access of RNA and DNA, right? Which is there inside my factory. That is nothing but the soma, isn't it? So now I have to go, uh, or the toxins or the viruses have to get access towards the, uh, of the soma, isn't it? So they have to go towards the soma or towards my factory and they take the help of this. Basically, they get adhered to this protein. And this is going to cause the neurological diseases which we don't usually have the cure of, such as, you must have heard of it, you must have heard of it, that is rabies, herpes, tetanus and polio. Yes, we can give the vaccines of it, which is prophylaxis. Hone se pehle. Precaution is better than cure, right? So you are taking a precaution via giving the vaccines. But remember, but remember that if you have the patient of this disease, you cannot cure it completely. All right. So please remember, it is very, very dangerous. Patient will die because of these diseases and toxin. And the protein which is going to help uh, the patient to die. That's how we can remember it. It is known as dynin. So please remember the one which helps to die, that is dynin, which is going to cause the retrograde.
transport. So anterograde kinase in myosin and retrograde which is going to help the person to die or patient to die with the help of rabies, herpes, tetanus, polio. Of course, that's how we are going to remember. Otherwise, it is important for the recycle, uh, recycling of the leftovers. All right. So you can remember. Uh, so if you want another mnemonic, you can remember my kind. Okay. What is my kind? Myosin. If you want to remember what are the names of the Molecular motor, myosin, kinasin, and deeper dynamic. My kind. Bhagwan ke leetna yaad rakh lijega. Thik hai, aage bade. I hope you understood this, Hena, and I hope and I wish you remember that. All right.